All right, so uh, today I will talk about uh, multiphase fluid flows, the Kahn Hilliard Navier Stokes framework. Uh, this work has been done uh, mainly by current and former students, current student Nadia, who is not here today, uh, Prasad at TIFR, oh, you must know him well, and Noidita, who has just joined Coral in IIT Kharagpur. And we gratefully acknowledge support from various funding agencies. Uh, two of the things I talk about, one has just appeared in print, another is available in the archive. This is, we are writing up. So uh, if I don't give you enough details, at least the papers you can read. Here's the introduction. Uh, I will give you generalized Kahn, Hilliard, Navier, Stokes equations for binary, ternary, and active fluid flows. Then I'll give you some illustrative results and then conclusions. So uh, here are examples of binary fluid flows. You already heard about clouds in Rama's wonderful talk. Uh, so I will not cover that in detail. So that's, of course, very, very important. And then there are other examples like droplets of oil in water or bubbles in a turbulent flow. And here is a beautiful so-called anti-bubble, which comprises a shell of low-density fluid inside a high-density fluid. And I have to thank uh, Chirag Kalelkar for this uh, beautiful photograph of a real experimental anti-bubble. Ternary fluid flows. So, for example, a compound droplet for modeling white blood corpuscles in blood, a bubble passing through a liquid-liquid interface, Faraday instability on a floating droplet on the right, so you can see that there are many, many examples of importance, both from point of view of fundamental physics and applications. So to this audience, probably I don't need to say that if you have a homogeneous binary fluid mixture, which undergoes spinodal decomposition and forms two distinct phases, A rich and B rich, with diffuse interfaces, then you just use a kahn hilliard model to handle that. Uh, so here is the landau ginzburg functional uh, with a coarse grain order parameter of phi that distinguishes between A-rich and B-rich phases, positive in one, negative in the other, and it changes continuously between them. And uh, in the simplest case, you take a double well potential, and if you just look at an interface, which uh, the phi varies along only one direction, then that's a simple ordinary differential equation which you can solve. But that's not what I'm after today. Uh, there is an order parameter, but there's also a flow. So in addition to phi, there is a velocity field. So the top equation is the Navier-Stokes equation up until here. That's the kinematic viscosity. And then there are some terms which have to do with this order parameter phi. We still look at incompressible flows. And here is a term which you put in if you have gravity, and that's friction. And then the kahn hilliard equation where this scalar order parameter phi is that vectored by the flow. And that's the mobility. So there are many parameters. Don't look at all the details, you know. There are the complicated equations. But just I want to show you that this theoretical framework is capable of doing a lot. OK, so the interfaces are diffuse, so some Engineers don't like that because real interfaces in labs are very, very thin. But there is a suitable limit of these kahn hilliard navier stokes equations, which does give you fairly uh, thin interfaces, narrow interfaces. So here's the anti-bubble example from our direct numerical simulations. You start with this uh, ring in 2D here. And there is a low-density fluid here, and blue is the high density fluids, so the north pole bulges, the south pole thins, and then eventually breaks, and then you get these arms and they retract. And you can also follow the vorticity field, so this comes out of straight kahn hilliard navier stokes You can do this in three dimensions also, so here is again one of Girard's actual bubbles. You see that dome at the top, and here this is a 2D section through our 3D simulations. You see the dome and a thinning at the south pole and eventually uh, the thing bursts, and it's not only pretty pictures, you can actually calculate things like uh, the anti-bubble breakup time tau 1. You can't see that very well, plotted versus a dimensionless measure of the surface tension, and these plots do exactly what's seen in experiments. Well, how about three-phase flows? 
So, well, now you need three concentrations, and you need a more complicated free energy. So, you know, uh, with enough patience, you can work it out. Hmm? But once you do three phase flows, then you have these three concentrations, but you have to put in Navier-Stokes, which has been done here. Again, incompressible, and you have to keep track of two kahn hilliard equations because the concentrations, the sum of them is conserved by this Lagrange multiplier and uh, so on. So again, parameters, equations. And if you're honest, there are many, many control parameters. I mean, nobody tells you this in all the papers. But of course, there's Reynolds, there's Teclé, there's Bond, there's onus Auger, there's Capillary, there's Kahn and Weber. So in what I show you today, we are holding others other parameters fixed, more or less, and with very thin interfaces. We're just going to vary the onus Auger number which is this one over square root of the surface tension, et cetera. So we know how to do these simulations, at least my students know how to do it, and they use very, very clever codes on GPUs. And let me just illustrate the coalescence of two liquid lenses. Uh, it's known from experiments that spherical droplets, if they coalesce, uh, then you see if there are two spherical droplets, their neck forms, and the height of that neck goes as t to the 1 in the so-called viscous regime, t to the 1 half in the inertial regime. If there are two liquid lenses, then it's t to the 1 in the viscous regime and t to the 2 thirds in the inertial regime. There are sort of some series around, but none that can go cleanly from one to the other, including the crossover regime. So here is um, fluid one, fluid two, fluid three, we can control the surface tensions, and there is that angle theta. So let me again just show you some pictures. So it's a slightly complicated picture. So this is the 2D picture. You can see how the height of this uh, lens merger opens up. This is in the viscous regime. A, you see a quadrupole of vortices, which is not easily available unless you do the full Carnelian Navier Stokes. And then in the inertial regime, where actually you get biggish Reynolds numbers, so that it is turbulent, you see this uh, quadrupole separating. Again, a nice pictures in 3D, but essentially the same story. And then you can plot the height suitably scaled versus the time. And you can look at the two asymptotes, t to the 2 thirds here, t to the 1 here. You see such plots and experiments. People so far have not emphasized the importance of this quadrupole. So here is the width of this quadrupole, and this is how it behaves. Uh, and uh, you get these nice asymptotes in, in these regimes. Okay, uh, you can do a top view too, but I will not bother you with details unless you really ask me. Uh, you can also look at various spectra to see that at least in this so-called inertial range, you see an energy spectrum. For those of you who know what that is in turbulence, spread over many decades, the wave number. And so uh, this uh, lens merger is generating turbulence too. So in the last uh, 1.24 minutes, uh, I'll tell you about a generalization of that for a self-organization of microswimmers, actually contractile ones, excuse me, uh, confined to a droplet. It has been found in experiments that when you confine them to a droplet, they can uh, move. Uh, so, uh, so far it's been done with pneumatic type order parameters, but here we show that with just two scalar order parameters, phi and psi, this phi takes care of the binary fluid part of it, and psi is an active field for microswimmers. So there's an analog of the free energy. There are two surface tensions, sigma one and sigma two. And okay, there are lots of terms. So let me not bore you with them, but there are these extra stresses. And what makes this model active is that in this psi stress, you have a coefficient sigma two tilde, which is not sigma two. So this ratio is the activity parameter. And as we change the activity parameter first, it does nothing. At very high activity, it becomes turbulent. But in between, you get a self-propelled droplet, which has never been so seen so far with two scalar order parameters. And uh, initially, it is ballistic. And then it seems to be a lady walk. So uh, again, 
This is all coming out of Navier, uh, Khan Hilliard Navier Stokes. Generalized, there are multifractal interfacial fluctuations. So I've given you three examples, and I'll leave you with this movie and take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so in the first part of the talk, you said that uh, this formalism gives thick interface. Uh, so what does it mean? Does it scale with systems? Thick scale? meaning, or? look, I mean, just like in Khan Hilliard, it, it's, it's got a thickness which is psi. If you were doing uh, Ising model and Dow theory, that's the mean field correlation length. But the engineers really want it thin, okay? So they say, yes, you can do this, but uh, you will need a mega, mega, mega simulation to get all the physics. All we are trying to say is you don't need a mega, mega, mega simulation. You can do it with what we have, okay, uh, in our very department on GPU machines with the Khan Hilliard Navier Stokes system. Um, hi, Rahul. Um, yes. Here. Uh, so my question is in the phase field model that you have shown in the beginning. Mm. So can you use that uh, for miscible fluids, like when the interface is not so Well, I sharp? mean, there is a parameter, so which would in the statistical mechanics language being like going above TC, and then it mixes. Yeah, we, we have lots of data, a fair amount unpublished. Uh, so we will write it up soon. Thanks. Uh, a lot of that is in Noirita Pal's thesis. If there is no question, let's thank to the speaker.